is James Comic on the bike. Welcome you all back for another half ass production. And today we're gonna run into Hunter College MFA Studios and their gallery. The visual sensations, the painting of Robert Swain, 1967 to 2010. I was tipped off to this show by a friend. Matthew Delegate, who runs a space called Minus Space, and uh, he's got an auxiliary show going on at the same time. But Robert Swain has been known for probably about 45 years for his masterful studies of color. Uh, this piece is untitled 1973 and it's 10 by 30 feet. Now the thing I want you to pay attention to is the fact that if you look at these squares it looks like there is a fading coming in from one corner to the other. But as you come in closer you realize this is all an optical illusion. And uh, one of the reasons that Robert's work is so inspiring is because he is He's really delved into this whole question of how the eye sees color. This is also untitled 1973. Well, Robert was also included in a very important show. I think it was 1968 at the Museum of Modern Art called The Art of the Real. And he was included with a lot of people that were doing more minimalist based work, like Carl Andre and Don Judd, and also people that were doing things that were closer to op art. Robert titles all the pieces with numbers and letters. Because he's developed a very sophisticated system of colors, I'm not sure what it is. It's something like 2,000 various colors that he's broken his palette down into. Well, I've got a couple of small galleries here that show a series from 1986 to 88. What you can see is textures that he's built up here. I believe he was with a roller at this time. And, oh, these really are lovely color compositions. And when you use a paint like this and have this texture, it does kind of uh, eliminate any kind of uh, illusion of depth and it really makes you just concentrate on the colors. These are a little larger. These are six by seven feet. And this series is from the late 80s, early 90s. And that large square in the lower right hand corner might look black, but it's actually kind of maybe a dark violet. It's also interesting to see the way that he is geometrically dividing these spaces up. The squares versus the squares. Oh, that's hot. Some of these pieces he's worked on from 1990-91 to 2000, so Robert has spent a lot of time balancing these the color so that they're just right. And you can kind of see his grids that he's scratched in here. I guess those are almost foot squares. Well, a lot of people would consider this kind of conceptual color.
You know, I think one of the things about having a format like this that you stick to is that it gives you the freedom that you can just fine-tune the colors. And he says that he often works on these for many years, fine-tuning things. This is a huge exhibition, and uh, I guess he's got about 40 years worth of work here. And these pieces, the kind of uh, modeled patterns, are the recent work. Some of these huge paintings are very impressive. Wow, this painting here's gotta be about 10 feet square. From 1979. And like I said, remember, <laughs> Each one of these squares is a block of pure color. There is no shading, no fade, no airbrush on the edges on any of these. Okay, well, we're here at Minus Space, and uh, I'm going to take a look at uh, one of the ancillary shows with Robert Swain's retrospective at Hunter. And we're going to talk to Matthew Delegate here. Do you have any idea what, what the real theory here behind his color uh, research is? Uh, I actually do, and that's the, the subject matter of this exhibition. Uh, it's Robert Swain Primary Research. And it's the first time uh, Robert has shown his color research um, publicly. And it's a 30-part color system. And that was what the wheel that we started out looking exactly. at was. And that's basically the DNA of um, all the color research that went on after it, as well as all the work that was included in his big retrospective at uh, Hunter College. This is really a system that was developed visually. And, um, and he wanted really to sort of create a system in order to uh, work with color um, in an objective way. So basically created a system that has 5,000 colors approximately. It's like 4,892 I think is what the total is. Yes, and, and you were saying that he actually has rooms full of uh, these shelves here because he he actually mixes like a quart jar, a liter jar of each one of these colors and then sort of maintains that as a, a reference and has these shelves of this in his studio, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. I mean, basically he's taken each of those approximately 5,000 colors and has um, pre-mixed a jar of paint for each, so they're calibrated down to the color, the value, and the saturation. They're each assigned um, a specific numeral. So this is color 23, um, value, and then saturation 6. And then he's taken each of those colors and painted a colored chip. Um, and then he's used those color chips for a good 40 years making um, his grid-based painting. So here's an example of um, a device that he devised to um, create compositions for paintings. So this is a, a specific painting, and each of these chips then has a, a number written on the back. So this is 1176, which then appears in this chart approximately here, right there. Wow, that's amazing. So that's 117.6. So in a lot of ways, this is uh, almost what you could say uh, conceptual painting in a lot of ways. Uh, and uh, he's, he's just taken a lot of time to divide out the tint tones and shades. And what did you say? 5,000 colors? Yeah, it's about 4,900 colors approximately. Okay. Yeah, and I, I, would, I would agree with you on that. I mean, this is really conceptually driven painting. It's very, uh, it's very straightforward. It's very matter of fact. But the work is made intuitively. It's not made, made according to some sort of formula. I mean, he's well, really kind of feeling the, the, the resulting paintings out individually. Thanks. So this has been Matthew Delegate here at Minus Space in yeah. the Gowanus. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Kate.